It's time for the one day international team of the year. Now, when I picked the test match team, one of the problems was that the sample size was too small. And so there, was, there were not enough data points, you could get skewed. In the one day international year that we've just passed, it's, the problem is exactly the opposite. So many players had such standout, brilliant performances that I could easily pick two teams of 11 each and the editors told me one team of 11. That makes it very difficult, especially because there's been a World Cup round the corner. But you cannot get swayed by performances in the World Cup because there were matches that were played right round the year. You're going to raise your eyebrows when you finish seeing the team that I have picked. But there's a reason for that. and. One way to get around that is to pick your own side. Take a look at the numbers, pick the players by numbers, by instinct. And I suspect you'll come to the same conclusion that I did, that there was one team this year that was just head and shoulders above everybody else in one day international cricket till the 18th of November. There's nothing you can do about that one though. That's the subject of another vlog. But yes, India will dominate this team. I'm let, giving you a little sneak peek. Let's start. Openers. You could pick any of six openers, but I've gone with the one man for whom it was a complete breakout season. He had a fabulous year. He scored a double hundred in one day international cricket. He made 1,584 runs at 63 and a strike rate of 105. You just could not look beyond Shubman Gill as the number one pick. Now there's so many others. You could go with Quinton de Kock. You could go with David Warner. You could go with Patum Nisanka. You could go with Mitch Marsh in the 11 games that Mitch Marsh opened, he averaged 55. There were so many openers to choose from. But how do you look beyond someone who just brought late in his career such a freshness to the way he was playing one day international cricket? And the numbers are awesome too. Rohit Sharma made 1,243 runs. He had 209.50s, averaged 52 at strike rate of 118. He was also a fantastic leader. He played inspirational cricket. I don't think too many people would have an issue with me picking Rohit Sharma and Shuman Gill as the openers. Now, number three, we're not talking just 2023. I know we're looking at performances this year, but my number three is a GOAT. He's year upon year upon year. He scores runs. He had a fabulous World Cup. He had a fabulous 2023. Let's see who I had to choose between at number three. You only had Virat Kohli and Babar Azam to look at. Babar Azam had a fabulous year, made 1,065 runs at 46.5. Rachin Ravindra came in and played well. He only played six games, so there was not really enough to pick. But Virat Kohli made 1,377 runs, strike rate of 99, average 72.5. He hit six hundreds. How on earth do you look beyond Virat Kohli? So I've got Virat Kohli at number three. Now we go to four, five, six. Gee, there's riches over there. I've already talked about Babar Azam, but there's a couple of South Africans who come into the fray and who had an absolutely fabulous year. I'm looking at Aidan Markram and looking at Heinrich Klaassen at the two ends of the middle order spectrum. Aidan Markram at number four. What did Markram do? And at 52 and a strike rate of 114, he had a fabulous year with Aidan Markram. Markram or Babar Azam, I don't really like playing too many people out of position so I'm going with Aidan Markram at number four and just the most fabulous finisher that we had this year was uh, Heinrich Klaassen but he scored them at 140 we love that strike rate in T20 140 in one day international cricket wow Heinrich Klaassen just storms into the one day international team of the year at number six now who do we have at number five Gail Rahul had a standout season. He made 1,039 runs at 69. And there's one other player, a fabulous player, just slips under the radar a little bit, and that was Shea Hope of the West Indies. But I went with someone who was a little more innovative. If you've noticed, I keep telling you about strike rates all along. That's the way, that's where one day international cricket is headed. If Gail Rahul was very classy player, Shea Hope, very classy. I went with someone who was a lot more innovative, who could suddenly come and change things around in the middle overs very quickly. And I went with Mohammad Rizwan 
of Pakistan who also made over a thousand runs at a pretty good strike rate and I know that he has it in him to up that strike rate when he wants when he's in this company I think he'll play even a little more differently so Mohammad Rizwan is my number five there you are I've got one to six out of the way you might look at that top six and say what on earth no Shreya Sayer no David Miller no Daryl Mitchell what a year Daryl Mitchell had had my friends in Sri Lanka will point out the numbers that their wicketkeeper, well, Kushal Mendes keeps sometimes, but their wicketkeeper, Sadira Samara Vikrama had. What a season he had too. That's why I said right at the start, so many people have had standout seasons and I'm afraid those are the top six I had to go with. Right, let's go on to number seven then. And I had to choose between a spin bowling all-rounder and a seam bowling all-rounder, swing bowling all-rounder. Dare I say, I thought Marco Janssen was very, very impressive. He got 400 runs, he took 33 wickets, took a lot of wickets at the top of the order, was very impressive in the power play. But the team as it was evolving could either be a four-seamer, one-spinner combination or a three-seamer, two-spinner combination, which is something that I prefer. And that's why I needed my all-rounder to be a spinner. And the moment I decided I needed my all-rounder to be a spinner, then you could not look beyond Ravindra Jadeja. He's just had a fabulous year. 26 games, 309 runs, he took 31 wickets. He's also my fifth bowler in the side. If he has a slightly bad day, too many left-handers in the opposition, then I've got Aidan Markram to bowl a little bit too. So it was not easy, let me be honest. And I'd be perfectly happy in the team you picked. You picked Marco Janssen and went in with four fast bowlers and one spinner. Then we come to the spinner and three fast bowlers. So many good spinners. There was Mahesh Tikshana. 37 wickets at 4.81. There was Adam Zampa, beautiful bowler, 38 wickets, little more expensive at 5.78. But it was such a huge year for Kuldeep Yadav. Big, big part of that great World Cup run, big part of the great year that India had in one day international cricket. And Kuldeep took 49 wickets from 30 games, also took them at an economy rate of 4.6 and was taking a wicket every 26 balls. Very difficult to look beyond Kuldeep Yadav, so there I've got Kuldeep Yadav in my side. Now to the fast bowlers. How do you pick only three? What I did though was I went with impact in the power play. I said, can those bowlers come back and bowl at the death too? Which is tricky because there really wasn't a standout death bowler this year. And can you bowl, come and bowl in the middle overs and take wickets? Well, middle, late power play in the middle overs as well. Now let's, let's come to that option first. I loved watching Gerald Kutsia at the World Cup. Kutsia took 30 wickets there about at a very good rate, but you really could not look beyond Mohammad Shami for that role. He was picking wickets by the bagful. I have very little doubt that Kutsia is going to make it to a lot of teams of the year as we go along. But for the moment, for that role, I have to look at, uh, at Mohammad Shami. Then Siraj played a lot of matches, was a beast in the power play, picking up wickets. Sometimes I said you can get swayed by what you saw in the World Cup, but he was a beast in the power play. So Mohamed Siraj is my power play key bowler. And then there was Shaheen Shafridi. I love watching Shaheen Shafridi. Pace down a little bit, but he was continued to take two wickets per game. And as you saw in the World Cup, very good in the middle overs. The slow ball came in. Not the greatest of bowlers in the death. My side is not a good death bowling side, but there are very few good death bowling sides uh, in one day cricket this year. My last pick is Shaheen Shah Afridi. I'm very happy with Siraj, with Shami and with Afridi. Now, before you start having your comments about this side, before you start pulling out your, your guns and daggers to come at me at, let me criticize my own side. First of all, who won the World Cup? How many of those are in this side? So let me explain that first up. Australia won the World Cup, but this is a collection of the best performers of the year. For Australia, Juana had a great year. Mixwell had some great games. Travis Head, oh yeah, you've got to remind me about Travis Head. Travis Head had some wonderful games. Come inside his performances. Stark started to come good. There were a lot of players who played very well, English at times. But they all combined to form a wonderful ensemble cast. Now, when everyone's doing a little bit and pulling their weight, you've got a team that wins the World Cup. But what I'm looking for is a team of the best performers of the year. That is why. Pardon me, but that's what it was. Now, the other criticism, there is no left-hander in the top six. As you look at this team, you'll find in many ways it starts to look like an Indian side in that it's very batting top-heavy. 
there's good strikers as you come towards the end, very little batting as you go along, none of the bowlers bat, so it's that kind of team, but you've got to pick the best performers. You cannot say someone's a left-hander, so he comes into the side. This is not a side that's going to take the field. So again, I had to look at performances around the year. You look at the World Cup and you might look at me and say, what are these smoking? How come Jaspreet Bumrah is not in this side? Outstanding at the top. He determined India's bowling performances very often. Every time the opposition started to do well, he looked at Bumrah, magnificent at the depth. We enough cricket to be able to come into this side. So as I keep saying, this is not a team of the best one-day international players. This is a team of the best performers in the year 2023 and there wasn't enough of Bumrah in 2023. Why am I doing all these clarifications? Because picking a team of the year is the most difficult thing in the world. So as I keep telling everyone, do it yourself. You'll have a lot of fun. And maybe, just maybe, you'll see my point of view in this. Cheers.